How's it going everyone? It's Javi from Weather Sponge 5000 and in this video we're going to talk about how February will play out when it comes to winter storms in the United States and determine when you should see your next potential major winter storm in each area of the United States. So first let's take a look at the GFS model and unfortunately for those who do prefer the snow it does seem like at least for next week there's going to be much um, opportunities for snowfall unless you live in the higher elevations of the west coast but when it comes to the eastern half of the united states as well as more populated areas it's gonna stay rather dry as the loneliness is killing us here without any convective activity being able to bring any snowfall and i'm sure many people will be disappointed including me because i definitely do want to see the snowfall here in the east coast but right now it just seems like the ridging is a bit too strong the stability is too strong so there isn't going to be a lot of convective activity moving through the, um, due to this um, stability as well as the amount of, of a sinking motion we're seeing right over the eastern half of the United States. We were talking about this possibility of this storm system maybe developing into our next major winter storm, but that seems unlikely at this point because the ridging just to north of it is a little bit too strong for this to be able to move further northward as the computer models have been really confident that it's going to take sort of this trajectory where it's going to move from westerly to an easterly direction so I'm starting to doubt that there's going to be many significant changes in the forecast where it would be um, where it would bring snowfall to the east coast of the United States so I'll say that the chance of this becoming our next major snowstorm is low however that won't be the end of, of course it is just the beginning of february how about the middle of february as well as the later portion of february we do see heavy snowfall associated with this storm system like i said in the higher elevations of the west coast where the higher elevations of california nevada utah arizona and colorado you guys should receive uh quite a bit of snowfall which definitely will be um will, will definitely be fulfilling for a lot of the snow lovers out there along the west coast but for the east coast it's gonna remain rather dry and taking a look at the current North Atlantic Oscillation Index, we clearly see why the eastern half of the United States isn't expected to receive snowfall, at least in the near future, because we are in a positive North Atlantic Oscillation, which means that the jet stream winds are quite strong at this time, which means that the cold air is essentially trapped over the polar regions of the northern hemisphere, which is definitely making the temperatures warmer than average throughout the eastern half of the United States, um, which is certainly contributing to the lack of snowfall we're expected to see over the next week or two. But we do see in the more long term future, it does fall a little bit closer to average. So there's certainly a higher possibility of snowfall in February, um, right around middle February and late February, just based on what this index is forecasting alone. But we're going to need to take a look at several different factors before I can say that the East Coast will experience more major winter storms for the rest of the winter because the North Atlantic Oscillation isn't the only index that determines this. We also need to take a look at what um, El Nino pattern we're going to be in by the time we approach February, or at least the intensity of the El Nino as well as other factors like what the computer models are suggesting and taking a look at the North Atlantic Oscillation where it's expected to remain right around average so it could go either way which is the reason why we need to take a look at other factors to see what will tip the scale in favor of more snowstorms um, towards the eastern half of the United States. I must confess that I still believe we're going to see many more winter storms by the time we approach the middle portion of February into the late portion of February as well because if we were to take a look at what typically happens when it comes to snowfall anomalies during El Nino years and this is comparing El Nino years to the long term average between 1876 to 2023 so there's plenty of years um, to, um, for this um, the El Nino years to compare to to see how much more relatively snowy it could be um, at least um, and this index by the way is for the mid-Atlantic and we clearly see during El Nino patterns we see much more snowfall um, right around the late portion of January into uh, up until the middle portion of February and while that's certainly not 
the case right now. It's certainly warmer than average right over the eastern half of the United States. I do still expect that the winter will eventually return to form when it comes to bringing more snowfall to the eastern half of the United States as I do believe that since it's so warm right now, it's only a matter of time before we're going to see the um the jet stream sort of stabilize a little more and allow a little bit more um cold air in the polar vortex to weaken as it's just it's just a common thing we see with the weather where if we see a very prolonged period where the jet stream is very um ridged very up to the north where it's bringing warmer than average temperatures throughout the united states it's only a matter of time before those temperatures and as well as um, well, the temperatures be, um, get crashing down um, for the possibility of snowfall to be much higher. So I still do believe that we're going to be in for more snowstorms right around middle February into the late portion of the month as well. So if we were to take a look at the National Weather Service's forecast when it comes to what um, the temperature anomalies as well as the precipitation anomalies for the entirety of the United States. So the important messages that the National Weather Service wants to put out there is that a strong El Nino is expected to weaken over the next couple of seasons with a neutral pattern being favored right around April to June. And while of course this video is forecasted on February, I wanted to show this because since the El Nino is weakening, we're gonna transition more from a strong El Nino to more of a moderate El Nino, which could play a pretty big role in terms of the temperature anomalies you'll see in each area of the United States, as well as the precipitation anomalies, which will in return um, determine the possibility you're going to see snowfall in each area of the United States this month. And then the potential, um, and we do see that uh, um, the National Weather Service has listed that Arctic outbreaks in the central and eastern U.S. do maybe the, the, um, through the next six weeks towards the end of February could be more common as there's a sudden stratospheric warming event that has been occurring over the past few weeks that um, and it pretty much has um, potentially loaded the dice and, and, um, and could enhance the possibility of Arctic outbreaks right around the late portion of February. So when National Weather Service is suggesting this idea, then it's certainly not out of the realm possibilities. We're going to see uh, much more colder than average conditions and much snowier than average conditions in the eastern half of the United States. But take a look at its overall outlook for this month of February, and we do see that the National Weather Service is forecasting the temperatures to be above average for the northwestern portion of the United States as well as the northern Midwest. And even the extreme northern portions of the Northeast could get involved with slightly warmer um, than average temperatures. While for the rest of the United States, it's mainly going to be mostly near average for the most part. But the National Weather Service does believe there's an equal chance right over the mid-Atlantic and the southeast that you're either going to see a warmer than average um, February or a colder than average February. But I am leaning towards a colder than average February based on the historical data with how El Ninos have turned out in the past, at least moderate El Ninos, because... If we were to take a look at that, like I'm going to show you right now, moderate El Ninos tend to favor colder than average temperatures throughout the eastern half of the United States. But um, taking a look at the one month precipitation outlook for the National Weather Service, we um, the National Weather Service does expect below average precipitation for the Ohio Valley, which is expected during El Ninos. And it's definitely not something that's very atypical of what you see right around the Ohio Valley during El Nino's, but for the southern United States, including the southeast and the southwestern portion of the United States, it, um, you are expected to receive above average precipitation, which again, isn't anything that's out of the ordinary when it comes to El Nino's, and it's expected to continue on into February. So, of course, the chance of snowfall in the areas where you're expected to receive more precipitation is higher, maybe not that high in relative to the area because in a lot of these areas it's pretty rare in any given year to receive snowfall but 
if you're hoping for snowfall in the southeast or maybe the higher elevations of the southwest southern portion of the united states then you, then it's certainly much more likely when you see just overall more storms move over the area Based on the current Nino 3.4 sea surface temperature anomaly index, we clearly see that now we're beginning to see the sea surface temperatures um, get colder and colder over time. And by the time we approach the middle portion of February, we're expected to drop into a moderate El Nino phase, which will definitely play a big role in terms of the conditions you'll see in the United States. So when it comes to the temperature anomalies we see during the month of February during moderate El Ninos, which is the most likely scenario um, that's expected to occur this um, as we approach February, we do see that much of the eastern half of the United States experiences cooler than average temperatures and the anomaly is especially um, noticeable right over the southeast and the mid Atlantic. So based on historical data, this makes me believe that the eastern half of the United States will certainly have a higher chance of receiving more snowstorms, especially during the late portion of February, while other areas like the northern Midwest and even the Pacific Northwest, you're a little bit more likely to either experience temperatures that are closer to average or slightly above average during moderate El Ninos, which is the most likely scenario at this time. So definitely keep that in mind. And in terms of of the west coast at least the southwestern portion of the united states the chance of snowfall is certainly higher especially if you live in the higher elevations and you're also more likely to receive rainfall which is typical during el ninos during the month of february so if you're hoping for snowfall in those areas then that's certainly something to be excited about right over the southwestern portion of the united states as well as the east coast and here are the precipitation anomalies we typically see during moderate El Ninos. And it's what you'd expect during an El, a regular winter El Nino pattern. We see drier than average conditions, um, more specifically right over the northwestern portion of the United States, as well as drier than average conditions right over the Ohio Valley, while the southeast and the southern United States in general typically sees more moisture than usual um, during moderate El Ninos during the, uh, uh, the month of February. So we could see several storm systems move through the southeast, bringing multi uh, multiple um, storm systems that will bring heavy rainfall. As storm system after storm system will move through, it's going to hit us maybe one more time throughout the eastern half of the United States. That will definitely enhance the possibility of snowfall as well as heavy rainfall. So you definitely need to watch out for that. Um, during the month of February, um, as I certainly do believe that will contribute to the chance of snowfall being higher in those areas. And even the computer models, at least the climatology models, are forecasting the temperatures to be at least close to average or slightly below average around the eastern half of the United States, while temperatures should be warmer than average right around the northern Midwest as well as the Pacific Northwest, which definitely go is very in line with what we typically see during moderate El Ninos during the month of February. So I do believe that this computer model is certainly at least around the ballpark when it comes to what to expect for the month of February, as this computer model combines all the most accurate computer models into one to give us possibly the most accurate forecast when it comes to the temperature anomalies. So definitely, um, I do believe that this will at least be right around the scenario. Of course, I could be wrong. The weather changes very quickly and it's we've seen it plenty of times. Computer models aren't always the most accurate, but I do believe that a scenario like this would be a, a higher scenario than let's say um, than let's say another like scenario. So here's my overall forecast for the month of February. So I do expect more snowstorms over the Northeast, thanks to the fact that we're in a moderate El Nino, which definitely brings colder than average conditions, which enhances the possibility of snowstorms right over the East, the east Coast. Um, and for the Southeast, I expect it to be colder as well, higher chance of snowfall. I can't guarantee a snowstorm in the Southeast since it's definitely a lot more rare to receive snowfall that far south, but the chance is certainly higher, so definitely keep that in mind. And it should be warmer and drier than average over the Pacific Northwest as well as the, uh, the Northern Midwest, which is certainly not out of the ordinary 
um, from for what we see during moderate El Ninos. And then I expect heavy rain right over California, especially during the early portion of the month where a pineapple express is expected to bring plenty of troughs moving through which will certainly bring heavy rainfall right up along the coast and heavy snowfall in the higher elevations and in terms of when you could see your next winter storm for the east coast so i expect the hot the chance to be the highest right around late february for the east coast like the national weather service is suggesting so while the early part of february might be a little bit dry when it comes to snowfall i do expect that to change eventually once we see the north atlantic oscillation fall a little bit closer to average to slightly below average which will allow the polar vortex to weaken and bring the cooler air further southward as well as the fact that based on historical historical data we typically see those colder temperatures move into the east coast so i think it's only a matter of time before we see the the jet stream dips move through the united states because that's pretty much what history has suggested over the past several el nino years at least moderate el nino years so definitely I expect the chance to be the highest for snowfall in the unit uh, in the northeast right around the late portion of february and for the west coast i expect the highest chance of snowfall to be during the early part of february before we eventually will see the conditions sort of warm up and dry up for the west coast as the conditions will fall a little bit closer in line to what we typically see during a moderate el nino but that's it for now, guys, and I thank you guys for watching.